I am your host, King Rems. Today we are joined by the lovely Aish, looking fluorescent in that orange, looking oh, like a you, sexy darling. traffic cone in that. <laughs> I wonder. We've got Miss Faith Fontaine. How you doing, baby? I'm good, honey. We've got the King, Cockney Black, and we're joined by a very special guest, Andrea. Hello. Correct? That's right. Awesome. Today we're going to be discussing a very interesting topic, and if I trigger you, I'm not sorry. Why are we quick? to commit having a child before we know each other or have other commitments. So what I'm hearing is you're breeding up before can, you've can even got a correct something? phone contract. Can I just is that say correct? something? No, 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 can I just say something? You're breeding up on pay as you go no, phones. No, 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 no. Let me just say, let me just put this you out there. You guys are here shopping in Iceland, let putting out you. Just put, yeah. <laughs> let me just put this out there, yeah. Let me just put this out there, yeah. Do you know, yeah, that you could be with someone, let's say, two and a half years, yeah? yeah. Before you get pregnant. Okay, and? And for that whole two and a half years, that person could have been lying about who they was. Do you know that? Okay, cool. So you've been asking the wrong questions. Maybe. That's what I'm hearing. Maybe. But do you know what it is as well? Because yeah, remember, you think... was too concerned with your man could take bad up. Was you asking about his financial literacy? Was you asking whether he had private <laughs> health insurance? Let was you asking you, whether he had a see, credit let, rating? Let, let me just put this out there, yeah. You see when I was getting breeded up? But I said breeding, what are you? <laughs> a fucking French bull stuffing shit or something. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'm a chihuahua, you have to breed up and, okay, and guan, okay, so you okay, KC okay. Kennel Club like registered in that, yeah? Huh? You KC Kennel Club registered in that, yeah? True, say you're getting bred up in that, like one dog, yeah? No, 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 I'll leave that for the French bulldog. But what I mean is... Breed is such an ugly word, but go ahead. <laughs> when I was... Um, having, having children. Having my children, yeah. Amen. I didn't, like, wake up and say, do you know what? I'm going to be a single parent. Mm. Because do you know what? If that was the case, the second time around, I would have picked better, I'm telling you. But aren't the people you are with or breed with cognizant to who you are as an individual? No, the decisions so. you make are based on the energy you put out, no? I don't know, because it's like, again, it's like, I think life isn't black and white. Like, things happen, innit? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, yeah. Twice in your case. <coughs> Some people don't believe in abortions. <coughs> Touche. <laughs> Some people, they do it the right way. They get married, they have their child, and then it doesn't work out. They it's not end always up the right way. They do it a more traditional way. The more traditional way. They end up divorced and a single parent. Yeah, yeah. Some people, they get married, they have children. One of the parents die. They end mm -hmm. up a single parent. It's like nobody actually wait. Well, some people say, I'm going to go to the sperm bank and I'm going to have a baby. But... I don't mm. think most people like come into parenthood with that ideal that they're going to be a single parent. But do you think you are asking the right questions to know the person that you are intimate with? Because if you're allowing yourself to have unprotected sex with somebody, you've got to know a certain amount about them to understand the risk you're running of having a kid with them. Because you're either, one, connected for life, and in the worst case scenarios where they don't know, you're still bearing a kid that bears the DNA of that individual who may have, I don't know, mental health issues or a family history. Are you asking the right questions? DNA is not, what? I don't know. Something that's hereditary. Yeah, it's hereditary. Mental health is hereditary. Some mental health, some mental health, some mental health illness, yeah, some, some mental illnesses can be hereditary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are markups in DNA that yeah. increase your propensity mental to get certain mental health issues. And it's like, it also as well, like when you do have some mental health, like you could be more prone to having different mental health. Mm. And also some physical disabilities as well, but yeah. you're saying? But with that being said, oh God, I feel like the landmark's on me. It's like, again, you can ask people questions until mm. they're blue, or blue in the face. It doesn't mean that they're always going to give you the truth. They could just give you the answers that they think that you want to hear. But then are you paying attention to their actions? Because a, a lot, you can tell a lot about a person by how they treat themselves. Mm -hmm. And what I find with a lot of women is they want to they wanna be loved into being loved. They, they love into being loved. You can't love somebody who don't love themselves. Mm -hmm. You can't give the best of yourself to somebody who cannot give the best of themselves to themselves. Like, women, we are the architects of our own demise. Mm -hmm. We over-love and we over-give and we over-share to people that won't even meet us halfway, mm -hmm. but we do the most. But then as well, that's how sometimes you end up being a single parent as well. Mm -hmm. Because then it's like you don't want to be in that relationship where you're half loved or you're half abused or you're half whatever. And then you make the conscious decision to leave and be a single parent. But then how do you allow yourself to get pregnant by somebody like that? Listen. That's a very ignorant question I'm aware and I apologise. but yeah, I'm It's not a coming mistake, across isn't it? Yeah. It's, 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 I wouldn't even say it's a mistake. Maybe an accident. I don't, oh, I don't know. Whatever I it think is. that essentially, um, as women, mm. some of us are not equipped with the knowledge that's needed mm -hmm. in the developmental stage. Mm -hmm. Like, 
we could be a product of you know single parents ourselves mm -hmm. the environment we live in the people that were in our lives were not a good example mm -hmm. so you end up for, like the cycle continues oh, you however okay. i do think that common sense has to prevail because mm -hmm. yes we could have come from toxic backgrounds yeah. or whatnot but you know how you feel. Mm -hmm. If somebody is, we, we know what it means for someone to make us happy or to be consistent or to feel safe at the mm -hmm. very basis of a relationship, you need safety. Mm -hmm. If you're not feeling safe, why are we continuing with the relationship, mm -hmm. regardless of what our, our background is? And I'm not saying it because I wanna put women down because I understand there's a lot of things at play mm -hmm. and things do happen. But I think that we need to start taking accountability. Or, I agree. Uh, you have to take accountability. To broaden it and to bring you in, Andrea, where do you find that societal pressures affect the decisions women make, or in, some, in, in, in general, people make around having children or committing too soon to people and having children? Where do you think society plays an issue in that? <sighs> society, I think, kind of makes you feel that once you've been with somebody for a certain amount of time, mm -hmm. the natural progression is to have a child. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you sort of start feeling that pressure in terms of age or what other people are doing. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, you know, like Faith was saying, we really do need to start understanding the power. Mm -hmm. Like I say all the time on my platform, it's like women, we forget that we are literally the gatekeepers for civilization. You cannot come forth without a woman. So Absolutely. that is a heavy you don't produce amount by yourself, do you? No, but we have to be we have to be the they ones who them. carry it and decide that we're going to bring that child into the world. Yeah. A man doesn't get to make that choice is what I'm trying you to say. You didn't have that baby without a man. No, he can be there to conceive it, but who has to carry that child and who can decide to abort it, whether to have that man's child or that man's child? That's what oh, I'm that saying. That man and that man's child. <laughs> 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 well, <that is. laughs> Well, there you go. But I'm saying, like, we do have... That's a heavy amount of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I want women to understand that we literally can choose which men are worthy, like, and to have their genes and to risk my life and mm. to bring their children into this world, you know? Like, you were talking about the genes and the character. All of that stuff, we, we get to choose. Yeah, exactly. So we forget that it, we can choose. Don't make a cheap choice. It sounds very one-sided. Like. I was about to say, it's good to, it'd be good to get your view on what your view around is no, around I'll just, just come back to, children, to, 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 to your statement. It sounds like you're not. It sounds like you're just using men. For what? To have to give birth, like yeah, like, like what you just said. Happen. You said we, you said women are the gatekeepers. <laughs> we are. <laughs> we choose. What don't men choose you as well? Of course. But what I'm saying is that like bring it back to what I'm actually saying. Fundamentally, men choose women. Facts. Women also choose men. Mm. Facts. But it's when I'm talking choices, about the choice to have a man's child, that is where I want women to cog be cognizant of that responsibility, that level of responsibility in your decision to have this man's child. Mm -hmm. And no one can choose that aside from that woman. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Mm -hmm. The man can have an input and say, oh, babe, I wanna have a child. But ultimately, it's that woman who has to carry it. Mm -hmm. It's that woman who decides. So yeah. when you understand that that like womb management as a woman, womb management, manage your womb. Listen, like, that's got to be a university womb. module or it something. Needs womb to be, management. Like literally, understand what the responsibility of something so great is. The same way that men need to understand the responsibility of uh, where you put your seed. Mm. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's the same thing. But when it comes to the could life, be life changing. You it have to really is think life changing, about it. Period. It no matter life whether ending. it goes. That yes. is true. Ending Especially as, as, as women of ethnic origin who have a higher likelihood yeah. of suffering yeah. more yeah. difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, more fatalities as well. Mm. But I remember like, when I was with my, ch my children's father, um, he, he was a prolific cheat. He oh. was a prolific cheat. And at one point he was having an affair. And I would like, call him out about it and he would try and make it out that it was in my head. Whoa. And he would say to me, until you see me, she don't exist. Wow. Until you see me, it's not happening. Wow. Yeah, so I all booted off his door. I robbed his house. And when I was robbing his house, this is not alleged, this happened. When I was robbing his Allegedly. house- Allegedly. I found pictures of them in Paris together. Paris? But it's in my head, she oh. doesn't exist. None of this has been happening. Ça va bien, good god <clears throat> damn. So it's like, wow. at this point, I kind of went off the rails. Like, Did you beat I, him up? 
Let's him. Let me not. tell you one thing. Don't incriminate her. Don't she just said she robbed his house. It can't get any worse. But you don't have to Maybe add assault. Don't have to do this. Don't have to do this. Don't have to do this. Don't And he will be from the fucking floor onto the roof of my car. No, I did not beat up this man. All right. I put his car out the garage and I ran him over. What? Goodness gracious. All right, we're going to move on because we don't want you burdened for the next episode, innit? Please don't come through here and wipe this shit out. We don't need that. The next question I'm going to ask is... No, 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 let me just finish. What was I even saying? So basically, he tried to make it out that it was in my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When it got to a point near where it's like, I was just moving wild. I was Mm. like, fuck you, fuck everyone. It's like I developed this... I think it was my coping mechanism. Mm -hmm. It was like this I don't care attitude. You suppress how you feel. I suppressed everything. I didn't Mm. care about nothing. And it's like... One day, that was just who I am. Like, I don't give a fuck about nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, like, I cared about my kids or whatever. And at this point now, it's like, the table's flipped. Oh, but you done this to me. You don't even say sorry. Yeah, because I'm not sorry. Mm. Oh, but why are you leaving me? Eventually, I would have loved you the way you needed to be loved. Child. What is this? Is this like flipping the Hunger Games where we got to wait until like the second episode? Nah, you're, you're going. Back this. Just, yeah, so back in terms this. of kind of kids doing better coming from a married home, is that a statistical fact? Yeah, where was the that statistics that, that do show that, you know... What statistics? The, the statistics are that children... Where? Re- oh, I, don't Google quote me right now. Yeah, Google, Google it. it. It's there on... Something about Elle magazine or something. No, it's not Elle. It's, it's proper, you know, statistical um, research. But children that are raised in two-parent households tend to fare better in, like, yeah, we know in their lives. We, we know, know this. Yeah. And I think when you have marriage, there's that commitment to stay together. There's that camaraderie. Mm-hmm. And you know that there's consequence if you were to just depart. Yeah. It's harder to get out of marriage. Oh, absolutely. So you Jesus. tend to make more effort to make it work. Obviously, I'm not going to speak about, you know, abuse mm-hmm. and stuff like that. When I talk, I'm not talking about these things. I'm talking about... The relationships that don't have exception. any kind of abuse. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. So people tend to stay... I mean, today people are getting out of marriages, winning Lily, but there's still that thing in your mind where we're married, we need to try and make this work. Yeah. Cause so, again, there is a there tends to be a frivolous <coughs> nature with marriage. And I, I pick this up on social media all the time. People will meet and then three months later they're married and then six months later they're pregnant. Because people so don't even have the religion. sanctity of... of, of because... Where does religion was, come into because this? Because really, I tell you why. Because doesn't marriage when, start from religion exactly? Anyway? Marriage, That's marriage, ha- yeah. and religion go hand in hand. Mm. And when you say vows, they are contract and a covenant that you're making with God. So if you were, if you don't believe in those things, to, to you, there's no consequence for leaving you your marriage. Lyrics. Your marriage is just done, okay. and then whatever. But if you're, you know, you believe whatever church or religion you got married. Mm-hmm. through you know that there's a, there's very clear distinct rules to be fair dj envy said one of the big reasons him and his wife were able to work through his infidelity is the faith they put in god and the, the work they did with their pastor at the time so yeah. kind of getting that perspective i also think as well that yeah. because you know now a lot of marriages is based on the feeling mm-hmm. you know the feeling of love alone so i think that when you base something on anything that is so changeable. Mm -hmm. You know, people that have long relationships, they have long periods of time. They may not even really like them. Yeah, I do not like you, but I love you, stay out of my face. (laughs) Yeah, so, you Mm -hmm. know, but I think a lot of marriages, because of many reasons for this, you know, media, uh, there was a whole movement in art and literature called romanticism, Mm -hmm. and it just sort Mm -hmm. of propagated this idea that uh, the emotion uh, and passion is what life is about. So we're sort of in the the, the tail end of that, and you can see Fleeting the and why. fluid. That's they're, what they're I'm so saying. They're temporary emotions that's that are evoked saying. by random different things at any point exactly. in time. It's not something that's foundational. So when you do a lifelong contract, something mm. that is between two people who genuinely respect each other and decide that they want this to work mm-hmm. and they want to build something together, mm-hmm. when you use love as the foundation for that alone, not just like love is bad. Love is amazing. I would never say to somebody, be with somebody you don't love. Mm-hmm. But if it's only love, mm-hmm. you can see why it crumbles. Mm-hmm. Because what else is there to hold you together yeah. when that emotion fades away. Do you not feel that the power of having a child together is arguably more powerful than a marriage? No. No, no. absolutely Why? not. It just tears people apart. It's like, you know, people do, do things like that without the that, foundation. Um, weren't you saying um, uh, earlier on that y- you're, you would have, oh, I don't want to you, that sometimes the children are the reason for you to stay together because you don't want them to break up because of the damage. You mean cause, me? Yeah. I was talking about marriage. That's what you're talking about, marriage. Yeah, but I'm trying to say, like, don't you think having a child is more of a powerful union 
than a marriage because that is a representation. No, absolutely of... not. Because first comes your your marriage, and that is and the baby, in the eyes of carriage. God, and that is what you should put first, and then the children. Because uh -oh. at the end of the day, you're not your contract to God. Obviously, you have to, you, He's blessed you with these children. You have a duty of care, mm -hmm. but your marriage, but those kids are a product of your marriage. Your marriage so is the is the that catalyst. Have got children before their marriage. Yeah. So where does that them, where do them kids come after the wife? As you're not married, so born. therefore you don't have you don't no, have that. So, so, fuck so, them kids so, as so a person. I'm trying to say yeah. So say for instance, yeah. Say for instance. Aisha will get married. Had kids. Say for instance, me and you had kids, yeah, but we're not married, yeah? yeah. Say for instance, our you kids are big. definitely live in a separate house across the road. <laughs> <laughs> say for instance, now our kids are big, yeah? And say for instance, we're not together anymore, but then you want to marry somebody else, and mm. then you do marry somebody else. So then does that mean that our children should come after, after the wife? wife? That's the that's the that's the the idea of what you're giving. This is the thing, right? Mm. This is the but thing. But would they come after you if we were together? No, but it, what, what I'm trying to say is, is like you see me. I don't think that after your children what sense, should anyway? come. I don't think your children should come after your spouse. No, because what faith is first. saying after is after what sense? Like prioritizing. She's how? basically saying that your marriage should come first, then and children. then your children come oh, after. So you. Yeah, but now we're talking about an example. Where we're so I'm saying, say married? you have children. Say you have children. Are we married or not yet? We're not married. Say for instance, we're split up. Again, we've got kids. We've had kids, and now you're married to somebody else. Again. Yeah, do so our kids yeah. come after your new wife? What's in the what, what example would that be right or wrong? In the example that Faith gives, she's trying to pick it apart to Real give life it a caveat. example. Because when you say one's in front of the other, I feel like that would be circumstance. Then you have because, to choose, OK, because, right. I've got to choose my kids okay. now, or I've got to choose my wife now. Yeah. Like, what? OK, so say oh, let's, let's Faith put on our thing. I don't think yeah, it's I that think black and white. Yeah, You've yeah. Picked I out think a situation think. will come and you'll choose. I've got to do this for my kids. A situation will come, I've got to do that for my wife. Then you've got to kind of find the right balance. I think you've right picked up from both sides. So what is it you were trying to build on in terms of the priority of the marriage, the priority of the children, and any children that may be brought into the marriage? Because obviously people have lives, mm -hmm. you know? I think your kids are always going to be one of your main priorities. Mm -hmm. So because you're now married, A, I don't want to get into the whole Bible thing, mm -hmm. but... You know, it, it, we weren't designed to have more than one marriage for, to begin with. So is that a religious thing? Is, or from, is that that's what I'm saying. Thing? From a religious aspect, oh, okay, cool. with the marriage thing, we weren't really supposed to begin divorces like that and be married unless under very, you know, Certain specific circumstances. circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. So, but let's say this is ha this scenario that I has multiple. Wives? But it's the same marriage. Same it's the same marriage. marriage. Yeah, yeah. So I think we have to understand that our kids are still our responsibility. Mm -hmm. You can't fob off your kids because you've got a new relationship. Speaking of kids, but you still need to prioritize your new marriage now because now you've created another covenant with someone else. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean you absolve yourself of your responsibility. So to, bring it, yeah. to bring it back round, speaking of fobbing off kids. What is your view on women having kids with a man who already doesn't take care of the Are you crazy? Has? What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, but uh, I don't understand reading why women would do that. Does that is that like a clear example of his character? But this way I said to you, women are the architects of our own demise. Because it's like we fix, we see men as projects. It's like, do you know what? He didn't love her, but if I do things differently, he's going to love me. A if woman I do cannot change things, a man. But a lot of women... We don't realise this. I don't deal with men. But a lot of women don't realise this. They see a man and think, oh, my God, he's a drug dealer. He's violent. He doesn't look after his kids. It'll be different with me because I'm yeah. a different woman. Influence could come from anywhere. Pardon? Influence yeah. to change mm -hmm. can come from anywhere. I don't think it's exclusive to say that a woman can't change a man. You might meet a guy. He's not off the rails, but he finds more focus when he has she a woman. She didn't do that, though. He, he, exactly. he sought yeah, yeah. inspiration He's right from in her. Yeah. I'll talk influence. for men right now. I'll, yeah, try, yeah. I'll, try, I'll try to talk for men. Sorry, I'm talking for men. It's cool, yeah. So <laughs> your influence for a man to do good, mm. be better, can come from anywhere. Mm. And I, I don't think you can excuse you say it doesn't come from women. It can. But because she didn't. I, let me give you an I, example. Does a, does a woman actually say to a man, "I need you to change," and he actually does can it? Can I though? give you an example then that you guys can it does, chew over? Yeah. So, for example, Summer Walker. She was warned by what's his name, London on the Tracks, previous baby mums. This is what he's going to be like. This is who he is, and she fell into the trap. They got a pretty, pretty uh, baby girl together, but he showed that behaviour. He's continued to perpetrate that behaviour. She's then still given him access and didn't manage her womb. There was no womb management there. No womb And she had a kid with him. So in those types of scenarios, does it differ? Because he's clearly OK with the lifestyle and the way he's treating women. And she's clearly OK with being a number on a carousel of baby mums on Mother's Day. So him, <laughs> him, his life choices and decisions, whatever he does, 
a stand to him. Mm -hmm. But going back to what I was saying to you about the men in general, yeah. I've got a particular friend, he finds more focus when he's got a serious girlfriend. That's just the way he is. So it's better for him. He now knows if I have a serious, someone serious I'm with, he finds that he doesn't go out as much. He saves more money. He's not. But is he genuinely a good dude? Yes, he is. Yeah, exactly. But, but he's he, he's better with a woman than he is but without. But to be fair, most men wise. are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like so, statistics will prove that. Yeah. So we, women generally civilize men. Like if there were no <laughs> no listen, <laughs> if there were no men on this earth, <laughs> can you imagine? Seriously. I'd be yeah, quizzing. Me. Example that can't ah, I'd be quizzing. I'm just saying, if you look at the pathology, <laughs> <laughs> the pathology of men, and yeah. you see how men generally are, you know, mm. the testosterone, whatever that does. If women were not involved. What do you mean you know, testosterone, we whatever that other, does? Well, it makes men more aggressive. It makes men much, very utilitarian. Yeah. Like, if you go into is a, a single man's... Of course not. But what I'm trying to say is that when you bring a feminine energy into a man's life, generally it's better for him. Life expectancy Central C goes City, up. I've been around the men in all week. I need, I need female energy. You know, it, it just, it's just good. We're good for each other. Do you know mm. what I mean? At our core, we are good for one another. Tell me how a man benefits a woman. With his energy, he brings her stability, he brings her safety. He, he should. Brings her, yeah, a good As man. As a rule of thumb, he should. <laughs> Caveat, a good man. Obviously, a man can bring turmoil and chaos just like a woman can. But, you know, what we're supposed to, when mm -hmm. we're at our best, we definitely do bring the balancing qualities to one another, I think. Do you mm. feel that women, or men in general, take enough time to understand their needs around balancing qualities before they have children? Certainly not. I don't think that men and women right now are really doing that in I general, so. you know. I don't think it's happening. I don't think we understand what we are mm -hmm. and what we have to give to one another mm -hmm. and let alone understanding what the other person needs. I think this is where we're seeing a huge disconnect and how we relate to one another in general. So the question I was asking is, do we understand our needs enough to be able to communicate our needs to build a foundation with somebody before we have children? The communication for some human beings, it's not a male or a female thing, I don't... No, I just mean in a general sense, are we as human beings? It's not, yeah. male, so, it's not masculine, feminine, it's just... Yeah, cool, but I, I feel like there's an, there's an unfortunate consistency within the current status quo with men versus women, and it's, it's, it's a massive problem mm -hmm. to me because we keep on saying, oh, men are like this, men are like, women are like that, women are like that, and there's never a topic of understanding. Mm -hmm. It's never, I understand men like this, or women, we should be understood we should be understood like that. Th these, these, these issues mm -hmm. are not spoken about in a way of let me better understand. Mm -hmm. They're always like, here's, I'm a man, here's what I'm bringing to the table. She's a woman, I want to see what she brings to the table. And There's no the same. fluidity with communication is what you're saying. The, the communication's there, it's okay. fluid, but it's too kind of like... Demanding. Combative. Yeah, and it's, it shouldn't be about Women, we're like this, mm -hmm. what's this guy going to do for me? And men should, shouldn't be the same, saying, mm -hmm. we're like this, what's this woman going to do? For me? It's, 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 it, it, there's too much competition. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And yeah, that, yeah. that competition stops us from just understanding. And I think For example, if I want to know how you think, yeah, mm -hmm. I've got to sit down with women and get to know them. Mm -hmm. That's true. Whether it's, and I, I said it before, it's got with the women in my family or the women I trust. Mm -hmm. What? The, the, the date thing with the flowers and Yeah, sexual. sometimes you demand too much too early as well. You don't give somebody a break Me? enough to under... Not you, in general. <laughs> in general. <laughs> like, the thing is, you find with a lot of women, and speaking from experience of dating women, I can't speak from experience of dating men, is you want to know what I bring to the table outright. I'm just trying to understand whether we have some commonalities in life, whether you understand yeah. financial if literacy, get on. With, exactly, whether we even get on. Yeah. You want to be taken to Hakkasan, <laughs> you want some Pandora, and you man want some Jimmy Choo's. I'm just trying to find out whether we even vibe. And I think this is what women come to the table with. And again, I can only speak from my experiences. There's a lot of expectation before there's a desire to build a foundation. Can we get on? Can we communicate? Are there commonalities financial in terms expectation. of... Financial and also I think there's a demand that you need to communicate with them all the time. You need to be wrap mm -hmm. around and it's very demanding. And I think for me, it's more about fluidity. Can we just catch up? Can we vibe? Can we spend some time together? And then from there, naturally, you can build an understanding of whether it's two human beings, you can even cohabitate in the same space. And a lot of women don't take the time to understand the man that they're with and then put pressure and expectation on them mm -hmm. to understand. Mm -hmm. You should know when I'm upset. You should know what's wrong. You should know how to fix it. Mm -hmm. And not once have you ever put the the ball in the man's court for him to actually be able to understand. Women talk at men a lot, and I've seen this. Women talk at men a lot. They don't communicate with them, they talk at them. 
Mm. There is a way in which you inflame male egos to get their backs up and you don't get the best mm. out of them. 100%. Yeah, that's so correct. Spot so, on. Can Spot I just on. go back to what you said earlier, yeah, about like, sometimes yeah, you can have an awareness of yourself, mm -hmm. yeah. You can be aware, aware of your trauma, your, mm -hmm. trigger, your triggers, like whatever. And you can communicate that mm -hmm. until you're blue in the face, but mm -hmm. it's about comprehension as well. Communication and comprehension are two very different things. And that's that requires two willing parties. It does. Exactly. But what you must also realise is don't over communicate with someone you can't hear you. If exactly. someone's committed to not misunderstanding you, let them go on with 100%. their commitment, sir. But this is what I'm trying to say as well, but there's communication and there's mm -hmm. comprehension. Agreed. Because it's like you can say to them, like, oh, I don't know, like, this, this causes triggers my trauma. Mm -hmm. So if, I don't know, like, for, say for instance, shouting. Yeah. Oh, you can't that's shout at doors. me because, or slamming doors, like, it, it triggers, it triggers PTSD. Like, just mm. to say, for example, and it's like, if there's no comprehension, if they carry on doing it, like, there's no point in still... But it's also a differentiating the difference between comprehension and people not caring. Yeah, people respect. hear you, yeah, they but they don't, don't care. necessarily care. But also understanding that some people aren't versed in what their traumas and triggers are, and that's mm -hmm. okay. It's about finding somebody that's willing to be patient with you and communicative with you to work through that journey. I think people are too quick to have kids as a makeshift, as a plaster, as a way to keep people. But do you know what I think as well? As well, sometimes, yeah, when some people, not all the time, some people, like, growing up, they might have had a lack of love. Mm -hmm. So they might find themselves in a situation where they have kids because they just want to be loved. They just want to give love. And that's not right. Yeah. It's not, that's but not some right. people are like that. Well, it happens, but then we all have to be like, Conscious, conscious enough to at some point I'm not saying we're all perfect but at some point you know we go through something we think right do I want to continue this on mm. like I think we can all agree we've all made mistakes we all Absolutely. but the point is it's like now what you know I, I, I get it like we've all gone through things or you know there's reasons for people's behavior Absolutely. and I have the utmost sympathy and, and empathy for that but children but shouldn't have point, to heal from their parents thank you they and shouldn't. for me that's where I draw the line it's life though isn't it yeah but does it have to be is yeah. what I'm trying to say well, it doesn't have to but be your experience is why do we have to have children to bring a new life into pain exactly your experience or my experience as a child shouldn't be our child ex our child not that we have a kid yeah, together. Like, do you know what I mean so kind of speaking about it and thinking about it holistically, we shouldn't have to heal as children from our parents. Therefore, my issues or traumas or triggers as a kid shouldn't affect my kid. Mm. Your triggers and traumas as a yeah. your child shouldn't affect your child, you get it? Correct, but as, as, as adults... It's growth, isn't it? Yeah, but we don't know. Like, you're not going to know how your... what your parents' life experiences were. You know them, obviously, from when you're born onwards. Mm -hmm. Whatever trauma they had, if they haven't dealt with it, you're going to be subjected to it in some form. Mm -hmm. And that's just what it will be. Where it will be the way the woman talks about men, mm -hmm. the way, sorry, the mum talks about men, whether it's, I'm mean, talking about good or bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Or where the father talks about where women. Where the father talks about women, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So, but you're not gonna realize that until you get to an age when mm -hmm. you start looking at yourself. I've been there and I'm like, well, why do I think like this? Why, why does this person in my family talk like that? And why does- But you're very how, introspective and that's a how skill. that's affected you. That's a skill that enables you to adapt for any situation. That's a skill, that introspection is a skill that allows you to adapt to any situation. If you haven't developed that skill pre having a child, you're not going to be able to, because you're right, triggers happen. That's why they're called triggers, because you don't know when they're going to happen. You haven't got the foresight. But if you have the foundational ability, intellectual capacity, and the ability to deal with it, then you're always going to be okay, which means your child isn't going to have to bear the crosses of your childhood. My child isn't going to have to bear the crosses, because we're not projecting the same yeah, thing. will. We're not projecting the same thing. Let me try to explain why it will. Because what I've learned, mm -hmm. why I've behaved a certain way, act a certain way, I'm now teaching my child not to, or blah, 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 exactly. whatever. So whether you want to deem that, I think it's going to be positive. It's, a positive it's still impact. because of my trauma. It's just that I've now I get come that, to a the point of now trying to make it, it benefit. Yeah, the way you've child. spun it is more beneficial, is what I'm saying to you, so it's a positive impact. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Aish, you've got children, so it'd be interesting to understand and get kind of your points on how your kind of psyche and mentality and growth as an individual has benefited your children. Well, I don't want people to know that I had children. Baby girl, you don't <laughs> say you have kids. <laughs> I'm joking. You don't say a lot on this no, interview. A bit late. Do you know what, yeah? I will say this, yeah, like about growth, mm -hmm. yeah? So basically, I had my children very young. Mm -hmm. And it's like, when I had my kids, like, all I knew was benefits and baby father. Swear. That's all I knew, benefits and baby father. Mm -hmm. So it's like, he, at the time, provided me with a very good life. Mm -hmm. So there was always money everywhere, like holidays, designer, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's like, once we'd split up or whatever, 
it's like I wasn't me and my children weren't used to living a that way. that's that life anymore do you understand yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's like because I had the kids with him it gave me a sense of entitlement mm -hmm. yeah and I know a lot of people struggle with the entitled baby mother yeah they think women are entitled full stop Men are entitled in different ways. But this is but this is about I've had to kind of take myself away from the situation and look at it. Mm. Because I had his kids, yeah, I just felt like if I don't have no money, mm -hmm. you have to give me money. If you're not gonna give me money, then your mum's gonna give me money. And if she ain't gonna give me money, Wait, then your brother or your sister's gonna give me money. Is it money for you or money for the kids? For, the, for, for, for all of us, whatever. Because you ain't his kid. No, but the kids need stuff. So oh, if you I have need, no two leg and two so, arm? So basically, so basically, if I'm saying to him, Ra, uh, I need money, I'm not saying to him, can I have money because I want to go on holiday or mm -hmm. can I have money because I would say to him, like, Ra, like, the kids need stuff, innit? OK, cool. Like, the kids need stuff. So why is that? What's wrong with that? Why because, is that entitlement? Because it's like, how, like, obviously, if you have a child with someone, they should help you, innit? Mm -hmm. But obviously, the government, they help you as well. So it's like you think the help is the government don't help you. They, they spit in your account they, twice they, a month. They, but but do you know what? Yeah, but at the end of the day, if somebody's putting money in your account, then realistically, you shouldn't be saying to anybody your kids need food or your kids need clothes. The government is your support system. That is his responsibility. Is, he yeah. absolutely should be putting money in, in your account. He is, he is fifty percent responsible for their life. Yes, he so. is fifty percent responsible. But what I'm trying to say to you is, it's like. I'm trying to explain my growth, yeah? So mm. it's like, I was very entitled. So it's like, when I'm saying that the kids need stuff, they don't need a Burberry Mac. They don't need Burberry trainers. Oh, that's what you're asking they for. They don't oh, need right. Gucci hats. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah? Mm -hmm. Do right. you understand? Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah? All right, cool. So it's got to the point now where it's like, I would literally bully his family oh, into God. giving me whatever I wanted, yeah? yeah? And then it's like, one day I kind of stepped back, I started growing up and I kind of said like, do you know what, like, really and truly, like, they're my kids in it, I should be able to look after them. If anything that he does is, is a bonus in it, I, mm. shouldn't have to, I shouldn't have to bully his family for him to do stuff. So it's like, for me, it just, it put this like kind of like hustle mentality, mentality into me. So mm -hmm. it's like, I would look at my situation and I'd look at crackheads, yeah? Bro, wait, whoa. <laughs> that was a, yeah, that's a caveat. <laughs> it was a big jump. <laughs> no, it's a big jump here. But basically, what I'm getting at is, yeah, is <laughs> it's like certain times, yeah, it's like I'll be unhappy because I don't have money, I'm looking after the kids, whatever, whatever, whatever. But then I see crackheads, they're happy, they're living their best life, they're going to score. How am I out here getting out hustled by a crackhead? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just to be clear, they're the living prevalence. Their best life. <laughs> the prevalence. What happened? Well done, I am finished. Off. So, so listen. That's mad. Like, the prevalence so, right. of... Okay, so basically, so basically, what's happening here? What's happening here? I should ask you a question. I don't ask them for anything. Mm. Like, I've literally, I've literally changed my whole life around. Like, I don't have anything to do with them. Yeah. I don't ask them for anything. Mm. Anything that they do do is a bonus because I literally, I do not ask them for anything. School uniform, like, you know when the kids go back to school. Yeah, you know when yeah, it's yeah. their birthdays. You know mm. when it's Christmas. Mm. I don't ask for anything. I I don't know. Yeah. That is a and then, example and then, of And it's like, there's been times in my life but I've had three jobs, or I've had two jobs, but I will do whatever, I'm not getting out hustled by a crackhead. I will do what I need to do to make sure That's my kids have got what they need, innit? Well, the moral of the story is don't get out hustled by a crackhead if yeah. you've got kids, and if you're a crackhead, try not to be a crackhead, I guess. And, don't be, and don't be a bit entitled ba baby mum either. That is true, thank I you I think the sharing. moral of the story is that Obviously, things do happen, things yeah. happen, but I mm. think as women, we should learn from the mistakes of what uh, the women that are um, come before us have experienced. Mm. And we need to choose a better. We have to, we can't let love just govern our choices. Your womb is high not, value. It's yeah. not logical. It's not, it doesn't make any logical 100%. sense. 100%. We shouldn't have to go through what you've had to go through and look yeah. after but your kids it. alone. But you shouldn't have to. Well, because you woman, see guys, they will moment, come into, so, so don't, literally say this, because guys, they will come into my life, yeah? And they will see how I am with my kids and that. And then they'll be begging me for a baby. Yeah, no, we can't have you a said, kid. You no. said, no, good for you, No, hun, no, no, but this is it as well, because some girls, big red you can see, yeah. some girls, yeah, you can see how many b men they've been with, just by amount of kids that they've got in tow. Jeez, man said in tow, you know, like they're pulling them behind. But I no, think like, if women understood their power more, 
I think you and and just really deep our power and what mm -hmm. we bring to a man. Obviously, do the work you need to achieve to to come to that epiphany. Mm -hmm. You literally would not be giving up your womb willingly to any. It's, it's broader than just men. It's what we bring to the mm -hmm. world mm -hmm. as an essence, as beings. I mean, yeah. we're all powerful beings. Whether you're male, female, we're all powerful beings. If we all understood our power, the situations we put ourselves in wouldn't implicate that of another little life. That's what I know. That's, what I mean? that's really what it is about for me. And you know, your situation, I think it's amazing that you've sort of been able to stand on your two feet. Yeah. But I think overall, women need to understand that, and I'm not talking about you here, but it's not a flex to have to do everything alone. Like, it's, no, but you not you, it's, it's my but I'm saying it is for flex. you because of what you've come from. But what I'm saying overall, sometimes women that get this perception be the norm. that just be the because, norm. you know, we're able to, like suffering, <laughs> your ability to withstand burden yeah. is not what qualifies you as like we a We end up playing the hierarchy person. of oppression game and it's yeah, not and that. Yeah, and it's but just really you know not what? about that. This has been a lit conversation. We could keep it going. Make sure you hit us in the comments, hit us in the DMs. We have been taught that talk. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your candor most importantly and we'll catch you in the next show and get get life insurance if you are a single parent oh and also health, Baby, health, I know health. You're gonna, no, 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 no.